Hi, my name is John Garfield. This is the Releasing Kings newsletter. It's December 7th, 2019. I want to talk to you about tribe, uh, a culture of fathering dreams. I just got back from 10 days in Europe. Had a lot of fun. Went to Amsterdam and The Hague and uh, Maslaus and uh, Krakow, Poland. Uh, it was a party. <laughs> So there's a great awakening happening around the world. It's uh, got different looks and different mountains. It's a shift from servants who need help, healing, and guidance to sons who have dreams and initiative and results. Uh, and there, I'm going to give you a couple of examples, one from the corporate world and one from the church world. In the corporate culture, people have been treated like sheep who can't be trusted, and managers saw themselves as needing to control and guide these <clears throat> you know, misguided, huddled masses. <laughs> That's shifting to a vision of leadership that uh, connects people with a shared purpose and encourages their entrepreneurial creativity. Maximizes profits too, by the way. Uh, it's a realization that the contributor can do things the leader can't, and there's a level of respect that comes out of that awareness. So thankfully, mi millennials just won't work for these autocratic managers. It's over. <laughs> Those days are gone. <laughs> so churches have seen themselves as pastoral hospitals healing the lost, weak, and wounded with a, a mothering, lovering uh, approach to fix broken people. And that's shifting a little bit too. We're not leaving that behind, but uh, it's shifting to a kingdom concept where sons are being invited to inherit their books and play their role as sons who bring heaven to earth and disciple nations. These sons want to be heard and understood and launched, not fixed. They're, they don't view themselves as uh, problems needing to be fixed. Um, so in every sphere of our culture, <clears throat> people are breaking out of the sheeple mode. Um, and, and they're finding the purpose the Father wrote in their hearts, and they're walking it out with results, um, including, you know, businesses with profits. <laughs> and it's a divine discontent that's currently seen in demonstrations in 30-plus nations around the world. It's the awakening from slumber that the media mountain carries a huge amount of deceptive manipulation uh, designed to hold us back. So um, autoc autocracy in government, you know, over control, people, you know, are starting not to tolerate that. And um, <clears throat> same in the media, when the media plays along in the deception, uh, people are starting not to tolerate that either, which is very, very helpful healthy when you think about a great awakening and a reformation. It's a very exciting time to be alive. So it's a jailbreak from the monotony of uh, slavery to the liberation uh, of the fact that your dream can come true and at, at a personal level, a business level, and even a national level. So if, let's talk about fathering. These, these cultures <clears throat> in these mountains that I'm talking about, groups of you know 10 to 50 people, they have fathers who pull sons into their inheritance. Uh, they know how to prophetically listen to what the father's written in the hearts of people, and they can help articulate it and encourage it. And so as a son, when, when we experience that, it feels very different. Instead of being pulled into the vision of another person or a company or a church, uh, I'm pulled into my destiny. That's a totally different experience. <laughs> and I want to suggest that when you do that for someone, they love you for it. And uh, there's this sense of it. it's an apostolic hour and the, and the expression, you know, I'm not saying I'm an apostle or you should all be apostles, but I am saying we, we should be apostolic in the sense that we are fathers who help pull other people into their dreams. So when that happens, both the father and the son catch a glimpse of something very precious in the son's purpose. And it's not hard to see what the future will look like when it's mature. Um, the level of honor and respect turns to love and it turns into a tribe. Uh, the party starts when a group of people adopts a culture that is intentional about discovering and promoting one another's kingdom purpose. So <clears throat> when you think about intentional tribes, it's a time to be intentional about creating those tribes where we know each other's purpose. And, and the culture is built around knowing the specifics of my kingdom purpose and your kingdom purpose. So here's the shopping list of um, how to make it happen. So number one, 
Uh, as a son, I'm breaking off general, generational baggage in the courts, and I'm using my seer gift to catch the purpose in the, in the Father's heart and the council. In other words, I'm ascending to heaven. I'm bringing kingdom back. Um, we wrote about that in Seers and Doers. I encourage you to get that book. So I'm taking the time to be in heaven so I can bring heaven to earth, and I'm bringing back purpose. It, it works, and it makes a difference, and that is the single biggest kingdom strategy that's happening right now is that sons are being invited to heaven to bring the kingdom back to earth. Second one, I'm connecting with the why God wrote in my heart. I know my purpose and I have it in writing. It's exciting. That purpose naturally moves to goals, to plans, to progress on my dream. And I feel the wind of God at my back because it's his dream too. There, there's a certain authority that goes with realizing that you know, the thing that he wrote in my heart is also in his heart. And uh, that gets exciting because we do it in his power, in his strength, and in his wisdom. So, just FYI, here's my purpose statement with this suggestion. You should have one too. Um, mine is to help people, businesses, and nations intentionally connect with the desires God wrote in their hearts so that they can play their role in a strategic reformation that changes the world. And Get the attaboy. Well done now, good and faithful servant on the way. <laughs> it's exciting and it's fun. Uh, third one. Once I'm comfortable in my purpose statement, I start to listen for the prophetic sound in the desires of other people's hearts. I'm intentional about pulling them into their dream and, and into their destiny. And we developed the online heart plan for exactly that purpose. <clears throat> so the frosting is... How much people appreciate fathers being intentional about pulling them into their dream? People love that. I, I mean, I went to Europe and I had people I hadn't seen for a year, um, you know, traveled four hours just to connect. And um, they, they esteem it. They appreciate it. They, they love that sense of um, someone is like a father to them and pulls them into their destiny. <clears throat> I don't carry authority over people. I just encourage them uh, in their dream. And, and it's powerful. More powerful than authority, by the way. <laughs> so our dreams and kingdom assignments, this is number four, always have a financial component. Uh, so I'm also developing the value I bring to other people. I'm evaluating the cash flow that goes with my dream. It has an entrepreneurial aspect that adds value and creates wealth. People are blessed to buy the value I bring in my vocation or business. And I can make a connection between the kingdom, the kingdom and, and my work. I'm not afraid to have fun, make money, and love people. So when we talk to people about you know, pulling them into their destiny, there's a financial component that, to complete that story. It's not just you know, a dream that somebody else is gonna pay for. It's gonna be financially self-sustaining when you get the whole story. And uh, number five, when the curtain is pulled back on the business expression of my dream, I can see a larger kingdom purpose that involves other people and often extends even beyond my lifetime. I'm connected to a much higher purpose that makes room for the dreams of other players and other partners. And it has a, a legacy component to it. Um, number six, I never get too busy to revisit the council and hear my father's heart. Um, that's back to seers and doers. Uh, he never tires of adding new wings on my dream and opening new doors that no man can shut. Now, being in the council, and in, in my case, it's visiting with the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the seven spirits of God, and getting, um, you know, input from, that's like a personal conference every time I want, <laughs> which is to the tune of once or twice a week uh, is the way it's worked out for me. And I want to suggest that... Uh, that's our, our number one uh, calling. So this uh, culture of um, Psalm 84, 7, by the way, my favorite verse, they go from strength to strength. Every one of them appears before God in Zion. It's not really an option in this hour. So this culture of fathering hearts is someone in a pioneering stage. And, and we usually interpret delays in terms of personal shame or failure. You know, something gets delayed or my, you know, my dream isn't coming true fast enough or something goes wrong, uh, I usually have someone to blame. It's me. <laughs> and I want to suggest that we're birthing a new culture and apostolic fathers are releasing 
the desire in sons. And tribes are connecting hearts, um, are, are forming around the world. So don't let the degree of difficulty keep you outside the party looking in. You're invited. Don't blame yourself. There, there, there are lots of other reasons there's resistance in the air. Um, we, can sh we can show you how to inherit that dream. And uh, we have a tribe to make it happen. And uh, so I want to encourage you to, uh, if you haven't read Seers and Doers, read that. If you haven't uh, looked into the possibility of taking the online heart plan, uh, take a look at that. And I also want to invite you to uh, a course called Seers and Doers, where we're actually teaching people how to pray in the courts and the council. Um, I recommend those. We'll start up both of those in probably the January time frame. So have a great uh, Christmas month. It's uh, December now, and uh, we'll crank it up in January. Love to chat with you personally about it. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm releasing this kingdom strategy, this, this powerful ability for sons to be part of your council and bring heaven back to earth and make a practical difference in, in seven mountains, Father, in businesses and, and uh, in government and in the family and church and, Father, um, journalism, the arts, uh, entertainment. Father, we just thank you for what's happening in the United States today. In Jesus' name, I'm thanking you for Donald Trump. I'm thanking you for the, the, uh, the health of our economy and the health of our nation. I'm thanking you for exposing the deep state and releasing us from the oppression of deception. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.